Hey guys, I'm Pei. I'm a year two student at NUS High School and today I'll be sharing on my DSA experience when I was primary six in the year 2021. So today I'll be covering a few things including my DSA process to NUS High and other relevant information regarding the DSA that I would like to share with all of the primary 6 students who are taking the DSA this year or in the future years to come. So I will begin with my journey to NUS High. So how did I get to know about NUS High? I was part of a outreach program that is held by NUS High School so that gave me sort of an easier entryway into the school because I was already recognized for my talent in math and science although I actually haven't participated in any math olympiads or science olympiads prior to that and I didn't even get like good awards in those. The only thing I got was a certificate of participation. So for those students who are trying to DSA into NUS high school without any competitions or awards, don't worry about it because I, I also didn't DSA into NUS high school with bronze, silver or gold medals in Olympiads. Okay, I got to know about NUS high but why NUS high in the end I could have easily gone to other top schools in Singapore like Nanyang, Raffles or MGS. So one reason why I chose NUS high is because we don't have to take any national exam except for mother tongue. But skipping the national exam was a really big part for me because I don't know, I wouldn't want to retake my PSLE or have like a similar experience to that. So obviously I'm not going to take my O's or A's if I could choose not to. Also on the other hand, skipping the O and A thing helped me to maintain my stress levels a bit better. And it wasn't like, oh, the exams are coming, I need to like grind really hard because that's gonna determine my fate for the next how many years. But rather it's a continuous effort to keep improving and to not you know fail. So Another reason why I chose NUS High in the end is because of its specialized curriculum. So we uh, have a specialized math and science curriculum, hence the name NUS High School of Math and Science. But it's also an accelerated curriculum. So you would see that although I only a year two student or a year one student, you have seen me doing the O-level book uh, during my study vlog. Yes, the curriculum is accelerated and I would say that the curriculum is also more difficult than the O-level syllabus. And it's not bad in any means. I think it's helped me grow a lot in terms of trying to master concepts, learning how to master concepts concepts, time management, and of course, I gained a lot of knowledge. And the last reason why I decided to join NUS High is because of the location. I live relatively near school, so I don't need to travel so far or like so long just to get to school, especially because I see my friends who live all the way in the east and the school is in Clementi, meaning they travel like one hour or more to get to school. And it's really tiring for them and because of the curriculum is accelerated, it's tough for them as well. So that's the reason why I chose NUS High in the end. Then I submitted my application through the MOE DSA portal and the school invited me to send them a more detailed portfolio. So I sent them a resume with all of the information on award, leadership, any other things that I did in primary school that were significant enough and it were important for me to put into my application. And then because I was COVID-19, I didn't have to go through a full on selection camp, test or interview. So we just had a short interview via Zoom and that was basically it. So unfortunately, I won't be able to give you guys a detailed account of what is in the selection test. But what you must have is strong math and science foundation as well as good reasoning and logical thinking skills. So that is something that you will definitely need to pass a test. That is basically it for my DSA journey into NUS High. I studied really hard for my examinations in primary school and I think that also helped to boost my application because I don't have any prior experience. So that's how I got into NUS High in the end. Right, so now I'll be discussing how to choose a school that you're interested in. Singapore has a lot of Good schools because there's so many good schools and there are so many schools that are trying to get you to join their school. You need to know what you prioritize and what you're interested in. So here are some things to think about when you're trying to choose what school you should finally pick. In the end, if you get, for example, both confirmed offers or multiple confirmed offers and you want to choose a school to go to. First thing that I would think about when choosing a school would be programs that the school offers as well as your interest. So for me, because I have a strong passion in science, I decided to join NUS High in the end because I think NUS High will have given me a more holistic growth in the area of science compared to other schools in Singapore, especially since it's a math and science school. Yeah, I felt that there will be more opportunities for me to further my passion and grow my interest. So look at what you're interested in. If you're really, really interested in music and art and you would like to focus on that, a possible school for you to go to could be Sota and not another school. But if you really, really love languages and you have a strong passion in Chinese, you could possibly go to Nanyang Girls or Hua Chong. Another 
thing that you should really consider is the values of the school. What are the values of the school that you are considering? Does it align with the values that you have? So if you feel that respect and care is something that you hold really close to your heart, you might want to find a school that also puts respect and care as values that they will shape the students to be or to have. So I think values is something that's really important for you to consider as well. Another thing that you should really consider is the environment. So because it's not COVID-19, you guys have the privilege to go to the school, experience the school culture, interact with the students there, and find out more about the students themselves, about their student life, and things of that sort. So look at the environment of the school. Do you feel comfortable with it? Do you think you can fit in? Do you feel at home and do you feel like you belong in that school? If you don't belong in that school, or if you feel really anxious, scared in that environment, please don't go to that school, regardless whether it is a really, really good school or not. And the final thing is location. Please sleep. Genuinely, please sleep. I have friends in my school because my school is in the west and they live in the east. They travel so long to get to school and they sleep so little and it really compromises your grade because sleep is really important for you to function well. So if you don't sleep, your grade will drop. So choose a school that is really nearer to your house unless you have amazing time management skills and you can manage your time despite the fact that you have to travel two hours to get home every single day. You might even want to travel from home to the school of your choice just to actually get a feel of how long it could actually take to travel to school every single day. So I think I will talk about portfolio submissions first. So as I mentioned earlier, through my DSC journey to NUSR, I had to submit a portfolio and I'm pretty sure all of you will just up to 10 things in the DSA MOE portal website. So what are some things that I actually included in my submission? Anything like leadership, to volunteering, to competitions, or academic grade in primary school, to any initiative that I've done, features, presentation, or any influential things in that sense. But depending on how your idea is saying into uh, whatever school you're going into with different domains, you might want to offer your portfolio to cover all of these areas that you are trying to DSA into. So if you're DSA via innovation and science, you might not want to have so many language awards in there because it would stray away from your final application into whatever school you go to. Now I'll talk about interview, which is a huge part of the deciding factors as to whether you will actually enter the school or not. First thing I would say, number one, ensure that you have good language and communication skills. Without good language and communication skills, it'd be really, really difficult for you to actually show that you are interested in going to the school. Ensuring that you have good language and communication skills is a huge factor. It's also something that a lot of schools will be looking at. So if you don't have good communication skills, why would top school actually take you into their school? Other than good language and communication skills, to grow these skills, you should actually prepare questions and practice. So what do you mean by prep questions? You have to sort of spot what questions will come out in your interview. If you have any like previous competition, in science, the school might ask you how do you prepare for these competitions. If, for example, a dear saying in leadership, they could ask you what does leadership mean to you? How do you lead? What type of leader do you aspire to be? Things of that sort. You don't have to say everything word for word. You should be authentic. Show your true colours in that sense because that's what the schools are looking out for. They want you to be yourself. Practicing, I think, will help you to gain confidence and sort of communicate better. Final thing is, enjoy the interview. If you show that you're calm, you're confident, I think that would be also a huge deciding factor for the school. I don't have very many questions to answer but I have been scrolling through the past comments that I have had on my YouTube channel. So I'll be answering those that are related to DSA into NS High School or just DSA in general. So the first question I have is what are some ways to show aptitude in math and science? I think it's not only the fact that you need to have really good grades in math and science or you need to win Olympiads in math and science but rather you have good critical thinking and logical reasoning skills to be able to explain and convey your findings, explanations over to the person who's marking your paper, to the person they're explaining uh, some concept to that is also really important to show your aptitude in math and science. If your science and math passes and your language fails, you need to get in with computer science interest. If your language fails, I don't think you would stand a really good chance in getting into any school in general because you must have some sort of aptitude or level in communication. As for computer science, yes, you can get into NS high school with computer science interest, but that shouldn't be your only interest. You should still have some interest in math and other domains science. Do I be worried if my science and math is pretty good and mother tongue is very bad and I want to go into NUS high? If your mother tongue isn't very good, don't worry too much. As long as it doesn't pull down your AL score too much and your grade isn't too 
low for ELs score in general, you should be able to enter the school. I heard there was a selection test for math and science to go into NUS High. It's a staff leader in primary six science and math. Yes, that is absolutely correct. As I mentioned earlier, you should also have good logical reasoning skills and critical thinking skills. And the selection test will cover both math and science as well as general skills. What are the requirements to get into NUS High like based on your PSRE result? If you guys don't know already, NUS High only accepts students via DSA and if there are any slots, you will accept students via the supplementary intake exercise. So for the DSA, the school will probably look at your result for math and science in primary 5, primary 6 and possibly primary 4. So you should ensure that your math and science has been pretty stable and they are doing consistently well. For PSRE results, you should have been to get into the school, you should have a maximum AL score of uh, AL20 or you should be in posting group 3. So once you get a confirmed offer, you should still be in PG3 in the end. Other than that, there are basically no requirements to get into NUS high. Uh, as for the supplementary intake exercise, the competition is very, very high. It's going to be very difficult for you to enter the school via SIE compared to DSA as who accepts most of its applicants via the DSA rather than SIE because there are limited slots for SIEs. How does the NUS high syllabus work for secondary 1? So from secondary 1 to 3 or year 1 to 3, we cover basically the whole of the O-level syllabus and some of the A-level syllabus. What time does school start? This person says that he or she lives far from Clementi. So as I mentioned earlier, location is a really big thing that you should look at uh, when you're deciding your school. So if you're living really far in the east, you might actually want to travel from the east or in the north or south to NUS High, see how long it takes and then travel back home because that is how much time you'll be spending on travelling time every single day and if you cannot commit to 3 hours of travelling time every single day or waking up really early in the morning it may not be such a good idea to come to a school so far from your house it will really affect your sleep school starts at 7.40 every day and lesson begins at 8 so school ends at different timings every single day depending on uh, how many modules you take or how many subjects you take so that's it for today's video if you have any other questions regarding the direct school admission process for primary 6 students into secondary school you can always DM me on Instagram drop me a comment in the comment section down below and I will try my best to help you get into the school of your choice but do remember that the DSA process is to allow the school to see whether you are a good fit for the school, the curriculum, etc. So if you do not get a confirmed offer into the school, don't be too disheartened. It just means that the school isn't made for you. I wish you the best of luck into your DSA admission. I hope you guys get lots of confirmed offers. Thank you and